I don't own Kodawari, but uh, I'm gonna take you on a tour. Uh, behind the camera is my man T, the street gaijin. If you ever follow him on Instagram, it's just here. actually a nice place. It's uh, deep in Mississauga, Streetsville. If you ever been to Streetsville, it's kind of like um, Unionville, Markham. If you've never been to Unionville, Markham, then it's kind of like Chinatown, but not really, but for white people. <laughs> Alright, let's go. If you want to break into Kota War, they have a little nice, nice little, little add-on piece. That's when you know it's time to steal some nice cars. That's so dirty. <laughs> this glove used to be white. Don't worry, it's clean. It's just, it used to be white. That's, that's all. You ever uh, take Taekwondo and then, like, your, your white belt, and they ask, you ask how you get a black belt? There's only two ways get it dirty <laughs> or actually pass. <laughs> you know how I got my black belt? Let's get it. <laughs> Whose shop should I wrap at next? <laughs> Stay tuned. Why would you do this to me? Yo, I feel ready. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Uh, that's a uh, race. So, uh, Another Ray? No, sir. Oh. Ray, are you now? <laughs> yeah, nicer cut Nicer cut line. Straighter. Straighter cut line. You know, like, we have the, the edge here. It's a little straighter, a little nicer. Break my blade. Smell that squeaky. Mm. Love it. Okay, I have some tape here. You don't need the tape. It's nice to have the tape. You don't need the tape. Yeah, I just did it just because there is a rubber seal in here and I didn't want to cut it. But I didn't even tape it properly, so I almost cut it. This spot here, I'm gonna open this over. That's it. I have this here so I can still stretch this into this corner. Deal with the corners first before I do anything else. Everything else is easy, it's just, it'll just tuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just close heat, close heating. Generally, hot to touch is how I gauge it. Other people are more precise, they'll have the thermometer. Yeah. Some guys have an actual heat gun that has a thermometer attachment on it. I think the brand's called Steinol or something like that. You can get it at SignmakerTools.com. <laughs> They're like 300 bucks. It's expensive. Oh, okay. I could reuse this. I already formed the side, so I just gotta cut this one. If you don't see anything pulled back, you're pretty good. When it pulls back, it's just too much tension. Yeah, that means you overstretched it in certain areas. For stuff in here, uh, some people really tuck in deep, and I understand why people would do that. They think that you know, the deeper they tuck, the more it'll last, the longer it'll last. It's always the case though. Yeah. Because if it's not on. You don't have, imagine this, imagine you tucked everything, that means you have to go through everything and pull it out again mm -hmm. when it comes to re unwrapping. What well, you saw, right? Yeah. How they wrapped it here, and if they did it a different way, maybe it'd be easier to install later on. So here, it does come into contact with the bumper. It may chafe back and forth. So if you do put extra, it can do that as well. Yeah, just like PPM. Exactly. Oh man, so like tucking PBF, I don't even know, bro. Have you done the Type R uh, stock hood? Well, those hoods have. Hood scoop, yeah. But they chafe so much, the material always like lifts a little bit. Better put this trim around. Yeah. So I'm just heating again just to reactivate everything and seal it better. Always squeegee wrinkles in 45 degrees. Here, you know that. But it helps in these really tight corners. You could obviously use tweezers and shit like that in this. Spot too. And then this one they made it after because in pressure mm, on <laughs> Was it more expensive for that one? It's like $21.99. Sign maker tools. They're from Calgary. But the brand is from Germany. If you don't really like it, there is a hole here. You can hang it as a air freshener. Yeah. And then this is their I guess like wet buff applicator. Called the big buffer. There is a dry one, but you you're mainly using it for wet installs anyway. Tools can get expensive though. Like this white buffer app thing. 
a whole roll of that is like, I think 10 meters, 60 something bucks. Holy oh, shit. Oh, but they feel so good. Don't shit this coin. You saw nothing. Generally, you want a clean panel, clean, smooth, flat, unmutilated virgin door. No bumps, no dings. If there are, you can play bar it. Tape up what you don't want to get wrapped. It'll lower the surface tension, better surface the wrap on. And I'm going super deep in this, like, body shop. The closer you get, the cleaner your cut. I all taped up. Let's get the piece for the door. Not all vinyl you can do this. This is Avery, one of the best vinyls because look at that shit. Oh, it's not, it's not That's why the other ones would just happen. Depending on the temperature too. But Avery is a lot more forgiving than most of the other vinyl brands. You pull and stretch this with relative ease. It's not too hard to work with. So what are you looking for? Uh, so at the beginning, I'm kind of just making my bed, glassing it out. At the beginning, and then afterwards you can squeegee. So yes. you want to like glass everything before you squeegee? Generally, yeah. yeah. So there's going to be an area here that I need to lift up. Yeah. The only thing I'm really focused on right now is going to be this line here. So I press that line down first. Start dragging it too much, it'll create few lines, few dots. And all that is is uh, the vinyl catches on to a point. It's too tacky. Pull some of the adhesive off. Usually higher recess points first. Shitty wrap shop can't replicate it because they don't want to take it off. Like this last shop here, they didn't take it off, they just cut and then you know that line. Yeah. That nice line. White buffer. I'm gonna work up just to here. Or so yeah. yeah, really thoroughly cleaning it. <laughs> okay, so sometimes we get stuff like this. Lick your finger, feel the area where the dust was, and it should come off. That's it. The reason I did that is so that it doesn't stretch. It doesn't have to stretch in today. It just kind of like goes in there. Okay, after that, everything else is easy because I'm just get down to here. See how like there's wrinkles here? Yeah. I can pull it down this way and it should just go away. And seal in the door handle, cup. I can either do this now or work at it later. Mm -hmm. I can do it now. It's just put it here. Keep the whole door cup until it all kind of expands on you. You'll see like the vinyl kind of more and pull out and straighten out wherever it does not matter as long as you do not create a pocket that kind of like seals itself like that. <laughs> so when it does that what will happen? Uh, it work slowly. Don't don't the push too hard. Force it, but like force it slowly. Let the air kind of push the vinyl itself. Because the vinyl does have air release. Right. Uh, so it will do what it needs to do for the air to get out. But once you start sealing things, like pressing things down, that's when the stuff gets sealed in and then you have to pop all of that through. Okay, that's good. So some vinyls have a lot, you gotta put more pressure. But the thing is, more pressure means you may Scratch, scratch the vinyl. Scratch, scratch. scratch. Yeah, you may scratch the vinyl. So proceed with caution on certain vinyls. Super gloss vinyls, especially. Oof. Or if they have a cap sheet. Yeah. You try to keep the cap sheet on as long as you can until you come into the spot that you need to like do extra detail work and heat. Because with the cap sheet, the heating properties of the material changes. Right. If you ever come to rinse like this, you can lift it up, reheat it, just to relax the material again. Don't pull or anything, just let it relax. Air will kind of like let it heat. 
Okay, I'm going at every angle 45 degrees. Okay, now you must be wondering how the hell do I do all this extra crap? There's tape here and tape here. I'm gonna really cut this into an L so that way I can play around with more of it and kind of get deeper into these areas too. And then this is kind of like detail work with that. You, you hated cutting extras, well this is the same. <laughs> Literally the same. So if you've done this many times, you can probably cut just enough for that spot. Always round off your corners. Reason being is uh, it could risk, risk tearing. That's it. If you create too much tension here, over time when you heat it, it'll create lines. Yeah, before, like, let's say if I started doing what I did before with, I heated that and I heated it in here, it, you'd have like a line right here because it's all tension. This one here, I have a little tool to kind of go in. It's also from SignMaker Tools. They make Chinese knockoffs of these as well, but uh, if you feel that, it's, it's a lot different. I think it's better. Yeah. Avery also makes its own tuck tools. Um, the Avery tuck tools are really sharp. They have sharp edges. And what happens is when you stick that into places, it gets caught and cuts. Yeah, it pulls and rips. It's not good, but. This one comes in a, a hard and a soft. This one's the soft one, the softest one. So I'm gonna deal with this corner. I have another tool. This goes even deeper. And this one can slit and cut. This was coated with Teflon. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I wore out the Teflon. <laughs> but it's still good as a tucking tool. Like if I've stuck my knife in here, I might not be able to get the nicest cut. Mm -hmm. But with this thing, I can just get it. But before any cut, heat it. Relax it a little bit. Yeah, that way you know if it's gonna pull back on you after you cut it mm -hmm. or not. If you need to do extra post heat work, 